Hi, let's continue now with the, our design. If you remember from the previous uh, lesson, we have to find the solution for this over increase in the GM. Let's see how to do it now. Let's uh, make here the drawing of an um, NMOS plus a PMOS input pair working together in parallel, meaning we have both of them connected to the same input. We can make a drawing something like this. We have an uh, NMOS input pair and also an PMOS input pair connected together on the same um, on the same inputs of the oil pump. These are the inputs of the oil pump. Now the um, as we saw previously, if we just connect them together, we will have an over increase in the in the middle of the range. Now let's imagine a solution that is solving that. Let's find a way to have only one input pair working at a certain time, and then switch over to the next to the the, to, to the, the other input pair. Let's consider now that we want to have the PMOS working at at a certain low voltages, and then when we reach higher voltages, we suddenly flip and uh, we have just the NMOS working and PMOS is fully off. For this we have to make a kind of comparator that is that is cutting the current of the PMOS input pair and deliver it to the NMOS input pair. And how can we do this uh, kind of comparator? The easiest way is actually to compare the voltage on the input with another voltage that we set it inside. So if we connect another PMOS to exactly the same source as the main input uh, differential pair, let's uh, put some labels here, maybe it's easy like that to understand. M1, M2, M3, M4, and M5. Now, on the gain of the M5 transistor, we have to place a certain voltage that we we decide what it will be. Let's consider now that this is a generic bias voltage. Now, let's think what will happen now in the case when the common mode voltage, the voltage on these two points, plus and minus of the pump, is very low. The easy answer is the fact that if the... Um, biasing is higher than the common mode voltage, the current, the biasing current, will flow, of course, on this path, on the transistors 3 and 4, and will be zero current in, into the transistor M5. So, let's put here some text. We have these currents only when common mode voltage is smaller than V bias. Now, if the common mode voltage is higher than the bias voltage, then the M5 transistor will have enough VGS voltage, so will be on, which means that the entire current from the bias will actually go through the M5. And since there is no voltage VGS on the M3 and M4, they will be fully off. So in this way, we realize the switchover between the current passing through the M3 and M4 and the current passing through the M5. Now, if we make the uh, diagram like before, the GM versus the common mode, We have a certain value for the PMOS input. And at a certain moment, when we reach the V bias threshold, 
we go with the GM quite fast because it's a it's a switch. You can go quite fast to zero. But now, okay, we realized the fact that the PMOS is fully off from voltages between the V bias and the VDD. Now we have to wake up the NMOS input pair. Since we already have the current through the M5, the easiest way is to send it back through the transistor M1 and M2. And as you can imagine, the simple way is actually to connect a mirror. NMOS mirror. That will actually send the biasing current. Let's put some labels. 6, M7 into the transistor M6, will be mirrored back to the transistor M7, and if we consider that these two are uh, equal sizes, we have the same bias in current here. So, in this moment, the bias that was previously on the PMOS will be, send, will be mirrored to the NMOS input pair. So now, the bias of the NMOS input pair will be exactly equal with the bias that was previously on the PMOS input pair. Since, as I said initially, we should have the same GM for the NMOS input pair and PMOS input pair, and since we can size quite easily these uh, transistors in such a way that the GM is constant, we will um, have another GM now on the M1 and M2 equal with the GM that was previously on M3 and M4. And since is, um, the biasing current for the PMOS is happening, is appearing exactly in the moment when the common mode voltage is slightly higher than the V bias, means on this plot that we have a GM that is rising and then continues till the VDD. Now, what we obtained? We obtained a quite, we obtained a quite uh, interesting uh, aspect. We obtained the switchover between the PMOS and NMOS, which is an important thing. We obtained the fact that the bias voltage is something that we choose, and actually we have full control over the moment where the current uh, the moment in which the current is switching over from PMOS to the NMOS. And we, we of course, um, we can, because we have this mirror, we can change this ratio instead of 1 to 1 to something different in such a way that we have this GM higher or lower, depending on, on our needs. So we can tweak these two values independently based on this mirror even though we have the same biasing current on the top side. So let's put here uh, E bias with star because it's not mandatory to be equal. Actually, we can have um, more complicated things, like we have extra currents added here, for example, for whatever reason, and so on. So, But this is just a very simplified diagram to understand the principle, to understand the concept. And, as I said, now we do this switchover at a certain voltage V bias that we decide where it will be. And why is important? Simply because um, the, um, the fact that we have this liberty to choose the V bias will, um, will give us the freedom to select if we want to be exactly in the middle if we want to be somewhere on the upper side or at the lower side. Usually depends uh, on the design, depends on the signals that we have on the input. Now, let's look in detail what is the performance that we achieve with this uh, design. Let's consider that everything is sized correctly and there are no problems in the design, everything works. What will be the GM, the total GM now? GM total. As you can imagine,
we have two values that will be, let's say, equal on the PMOS and NMOS. But here, if we add these two values together, you see, this doesn't mean that it will be a straight line. You will have an overshoot because you add this value plus another one, so it will be a kind of overshoot, something like this. And uh, depend depends on the sizes that you choose, depends on the current ratio and so on. This bump will be bigger or smaller, but still will be there always. Usually, in practice, you can have something like 40%, 30%, 50% increase in this uh, in this region. Um, so, what we achieved with this new uh, schematic, we achieved the fact that the transition range is quite narrow. First of all, usually is just the mismatch. The the um, is depending on the size of M5 and M3 and M4 because there is the switch over between one and the other, so it can be in the order of hundreds to hundred millivolts. And also, what we achieve instead of being double is just forty percent, which is a quite uh, good achievement. So it's half less than half this increase. And another important aspect, we can decide where is this V-bias. can be on the lower side, or it can be on the higher side. 